Hey everybody. So this tutorial here is going to be on how to paint this power sword um, or force sword uh, using the colors red. Uh, please don't mind the wet palette in the background uh, with all the different colors. It's just the wet palette that I've been using for different projects. But in this weapon, when this episode, we're just going to be painting uh, red colors. So one of the first colors I'm going to use to paint this with is going to be Mephiston Red. And so what I'll do is I'll go through a full coverage of this entire sword on both sides. And then after the base coat is done, what we'll do is we'll start to highlight the different edges and make it brighter on this side and brighter over here. And then we'll go back and actually shade this side and shade this upper portion on the left as well. So here we go with the first base coat, which is again, Mephiston Red. So again, I use a wet palette basically to move my paint over to and for the first coat, you know, you don't have to actually put the coat on very thick. You can actually place it pretty thin. Okay, and obviously with a darker primer or paint underneath, uh, the red will, will actually um, be a little more translucent in that it'll show the black. So what we'll do is we'll sit and wait for that to dry. And when it's dry, we'll come back and put on another coat of paint. Usually two or three coats of red should have good coverage. Um, but if you need to add a third or fourth, you know, please do so. Uh, so what I'll do is for the time being, instead of having you guys watch this paint dry, I'll go ahead and add the two or three coats and we'll be back in just a few seconds. Okay, so we got a pretty nice coating of the Mephiston red on this sword. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take Evil Sun Scarlet, and we're gonna go ahead and paint that over on the upper right hand side and then on the lower left hand side. So let's go ahead and get some paint onto our wet palette. What we'll do again is thinner layers or thin coats are better than one thick layer. So I'll just add a little bit of water and we're just gonna focus on this riper, right upper quadrant. Okay, and we can actually pull the paint up towards where we want the highlight to be. And we'll go about halfway. So now that we got this right side done over here, we'll come over to the left side over here and then work on the bottom left hand side. Roughly about halfway. Now if you have the paint on where you can actually see the visible line between the Mephiston Red and the Evil Sun Scarlet. That's okay. Just uh, continue to paint um, that section that way. And what you can do is you can actually mix the two Mephiston and Evil Sun Scarlet together to kind of create a happy medium tone that you can actually blend the two uh, sections together. But what you want to do is you want to continue to work your highlights up towards the top sections here. And what I'm doing is I'm just waiting for this small section of paint to dry. Um, you obviously want the paint to dry completely before going on. So I'll just kind of work around that just for a split second. Make a nice clean edge over here all the way down. Okay, we'll work this bottom section a little bit. So what you want to try to do is create two areas or two sides that have highlights. Again, the bottom left corner will have a highlight and the upper right will have a highlight of Mephiston Red. And again, you can always 
mix a little bit of the Memphis on Red with the Evil Sun Scarlet to kind of create a mid-tone that you can use to blend in between those two colors. So we'll so the entire right side has Mephist, um Evil Sun Scarlet over the Mephiston Red. So what we'll do is we'll just add one more layer. I like to work on two to three layers, just so that the color is very vibrant, and we know that the layers are on completely nice and solid. And basically, what I'm doing now is I'm actually painting with just saliva here or water. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pull the paint towards where I believe the highlight's going to be. I'm trying to feather in the edges a little bit. Okay, so now that Evil Sun Scarlet is done, what we're going to do now is move on to the next highlight, which I will use is Troll Slayer Orange. With the Troll Slayer Orange, again, that it's a very big jump from Evil Sun Scarlet, but when you mix the two together of Evil Sun Scarlet and Troll Slayer Orange, uh, again, you'll get kind of a mid-tone between the two, and that'll be our next highlight up. So again, now I'm gonna use the mixture of the Troll Slayer Orange with Evil Sun Scarlet, and just work on a small section up top, and again, we'll be blending this as we go if we can, or layering it. A lot of the sections that I'm pulling down now are really, really thin down and watered down paint from either saliva or water. And again, we're just trying to get the tip of this sword over here with, with the final coat or highlight of the mixture of paints between the orange and red. And then we'll also come down here as well to the bottom left. Again, I'm pulling the paint towards where I want the highlight to go. Okay, and as we paint, we definitely want to let the paint dry. So by the time I finish this section, this top right section is dry. I can always come back here and paint another thin layer. And painting in thin layers is very important because if you uh, paint in thick layers, sometimes you have to wait a longer time for it to dry. Uh, painting in thin layers means that the paints dry much quicker and you can move on from section to section. So after I finish painting this top right corner, the bottom left is pretty much dry. Again, I can keep painting over here instead of waiting too long. Now if you get a little bit of the paint over onto the opposite side, it's not a big deal because we're going to actually come back in and shade that section and work our way down to a darker tone. Now obviously over here you can see that there's a section where there's a hard line right where the bristle tips meet. What you can do is actually go back in there and continue to highlight until you feather that edge area out or by just layering paint on top of paint. And it doesn't have to be perfect uh, because it won't be as noticeable unless you are doing a piece that's for, say, a competition where that matters. But most tabletop pieces, you won't really have to worry about that piece. Okay, so now that we had the mixture of the Troll Slayer and Evil Sun Scarlet down, we're going to go back in with just Troll Slayer. This is going to be purely orange. And again, we're just going to hit up the same area and highlight this top section here, the top right. This is just Troll Slayer orange. And notice I am starting a little lower and pulling the paint up towards where I want the highlight to go. And then down on the bottom left, I am pulling the paint down. 
Uh, paint will usually stick around to the last part where the brush bristles uh, leave. So which is why I'm pulling and pulling the brush off at the last point right here. And that's where the paint's going to stick. Again, I'm doing very, very thin layers. Uh, it's it's more beneficial for you to do multiple thin layers rather than one thick layer. This way you can control how much paint is actually being laid down. So again, this is just purely Troll Slayer Orange. And again, in previous videos I've mentioned that paints are pretty translucent, so because we have a darker base over here of that Mephiston Red, uh, this orange, as I put it down in a very thin layer, will have a darker tone of orange. Whereas where we're blending and layering up the brighter reds and oranges, the orange, the Trost layer orange will actually look brighter. So the same color will actually change its uh, consistency of dark light color tones based on the, the darker paint that's underneath, right? So now that we've got that done, what we're gonna move on to is Troll Slayer Orange with a mix of Uriel, Uriel Yellow. Okay, so we'll take these two paints and actually mix them together to again, create a mid-tone color. So we'll get some orange, mix in a bit of yellow with that. And you can actually skip this step and actually use a color like um, Fire Dragon Bright if you want. Um, I tend to mix the two two colors here because I can jump directly to the yellow paint next instead of having to mix the Fire Dragon Bright with yellow. So now that I got this mixture, I'm going to again just focus on the top corner on the right hand side. And you can see immediately that the bright orange really stands out against the uh, orange, Troll Slayer orange paint before, underneath. If you always need, if you need to go back a tone or, or a layer, you can always do that by just adding a little bit more orange to this mixture that you're using. So down here, we'll just add just a little bit to this bottom corner. Now you'll notice as we're going up higher and higher in the colors or, or it's getting brighter and brighter, uh, we're actually using less and less paint and we're just trying to catch a smaller section. So I'm not using this orange all the way down here. I'm actually starting it up much higher and just getting just a small section. On this side, this side over here, what I accidentally did was added a little bit too much yellow. That's okay, you could just blend it all the way up to the yellow. Uh, because we're adding such small amounts of paint, the, um, the paint will actually dry fairly quickly for us to move on to the blends much quicker. Okay, and then we'll work on this side as well. You're just basically repeating the same process from one side to the other, all right? This is this gives it that distinctive force weapon look where the weapon is actually gleaming or looks like it's being powered up. And by adding a little bit of yellow up here and pulling it, that's okay too because again, like I said, paint is translucent and it'll actually brighten up the tones over here a little while maintaining that yellow look. Okay, so now if I want to go even brighter, I can just by doing Uriel yellow alone without any blends or any mixes so what we're going to do is we're just going to add just a little bit of yellow to the top over here sometimes less is more so we don't want to do too too much we just want to add a little bit towards the tip of this weapon right here we'll let that dry and we'll add also just a little bit to the bottom section over here. Now you got to remember uh, what I just quoted, less is more, helps out extremely when painting miniatures because 
you're gonna want to paint thicker layers but you have to be patient and let the first layer dry and then add the second or third layer by painting less right you want to have less on your on your brush okay so there goes that side and now to really accentuate the edges what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just come back in and add in a white okay so I'm gonna use ceramite white you can use white scar white scar or Vallejo white any white that you have just basically a pure white Uh, and instead of painting the pure white directly onto this, what I'll do is I'll actually mix it a little bit with the yellow, okay, not too much, because we still want to have a little bit of a hint of yellow on the actual piece, and then what I'll do is I'll just catch the edges, just like that, that's all we want, we don't want any more than that. We're basically by adding that white, we're making it seem like that that the weapon is hot, because the hottest point of anything, of a flame, if you look at it, will be white. So that's what we're doing, just a, just a touch of white. Okay, that's it. That's it for the highlights. So what we'll do is we'll start going into the shading. So we started off the original um, base coat of Mephiston Red. Um, the color that I'm going to choose next to go with that's darker than Mephiston Red is Corn Red. Right, so we'll, we'll use a little bit of Corn Red this time to actually shade the red into a darker color. Again, you can mix it a little bit with the Mephiston Red if you like, or if you do thin layers. Um, at this point, I'm just going to also flip the miniature or the, the weapon upside down just because I feel comfortable that way. Uh, but now we're just going to do the opposite side and we're just going to shade and work our way down to a darker color because what we want to eventually get this to is we want to get this color to pretty much black. Black being the darkest color we can paint, it adds a lot of contrast to a miniature. And what I'm doing now is again, I'm, I'm starting from down here and then working my way up. This is mostly spit or, or saliva or or water here you're not really having a lot of pigments left on the actual bristles so what I'll do again on this side here I'm gonna work it on this upper left side and what I'll do is I'll actually lick or or wash the brush off and use mostly water or saliva to work my way from down here and then back up to where I want it to be the darkest it sounds weird but I'm you know I'm shading but I'm gonna call it highlighting the shading or the dark areas um, because you're accentuating basically this section of the model or the miniature and by not thoroughly rinsing out the the brush you're still having some leftover pigment on, pigment on the brushes to stick to the actual miniature Okay, and that was just with corn red, and you can definitely see the difference now between the lighter areas and the corn red. Right? So now what we're going to do is take the actual corn red that we have here, and we're going to mix in a little bit of brown. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be using more fang brown. So I'll mix these two paints together to create a darker red, red tone. Right now, you don't want to use too much brown because brown is the darker colors are pigments are very strong. So just a tad or a touch of brown will actually make the Mephiston red seem darker, and that's kind of what we're going for. Just add a touch more of that brown over here. Okay, the reason I use also Morphang Brown is because it's got a little bit of a red hue to the brown, which ties in nicely with the red that I'm using currently. You don't want to jump straight into black. Um, black is such a dark contrast that if you jump straight from the red to the black, um, you'll definitely see lines, especially if you want to 
fade it or layer it down. As you can see, this the tip of the sword over here on the right bottom right is starting to get extremely dark. That's what we want. We want we want that to be as dark as we can get, so that it contrasts really well with that highlight that we worked on. It's all perceiving the light and dark next to each other, which makes the model very attractive and very eye catchy. It becomes eye candy. Okay, so now that we have that much dark with that brown, now we can start focusing on adding a little bit of that black. So we'll take Abaddon Black, and instead of just painting this on, water down just a little bit, I'm gonna actually water it down quite a bit, so that I almost make it into like a glaze or a wash. And I'll start off from the very tip first, just to make sure that I know how dark the paint is. And then again, I'll work from a certain point like here, back. Obviously, again, wiping the brush, brush off onto a paper towel, leaving just water with a very, very fine amount of pigment left on the brush that I can work pushing back. And again, you can see that I'm slowly starting to add that black onto the section right here on the bottom left, or bottom right, I apologize. Okay, and then we'll also, while that dries, we'll continue to work on the top left of the actual weapon. Again, just like I did with the yellow and then the white, less is more. We don't want to overdo this and put too much black in. So we'll let that sit over here and let the side dry over here, and then we'll come back to the bottom right. Okay, and then we'll work on the top left now, because that should be dry. Okay, and pretty much that's about it for your force weapon. Obviously you could do a lot more with this. But just to showcase, we worked on this force weapon. Um, it's up to you as the artist to pull that black shade down lower or to bring the highlights up higher or if you want to leave a more wider area that's red or whatever color you choose. Now you can use the same combination for blues, for greens, for yellows, obviously I did red here, but this is just the way I do force weapons. And if you really, really want to accentuate that middle line, you can actually carry the white and the yellow mixture line basically all the way down the center over here to create a separation from one half of the weapon to the other half or you can just leave it as is like I've painted. Now obviously this section over here will be painted brown as, as the skull but as far as the force weapon is concerned that's all you have to do and it just takes a little bit of practice in learning um, how to sub subdivide the weapon so the whole thing can be painted with Mephiston Red which I did then I went in halves the the first half on the bottom left here was painted then with a mixture of Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet, as well as the upper right half. Then we went in um, with a little bit of mixture of just, uh, not mixture, but just Evil Sun Scarlet. And then afterwards, about a quarter way from for, for this side, we added the yellow and orange mixtures. So I basically divided this into quarters so that the opposite half would have the um, corn red and then eventually with the brown and blacks on, on about roughly a quarter. So you just have to segment your weapon into sections like that and then work on the color. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you like this tutorial. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please make sure you post below and hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, remember, keep that paint flowing and happy painting.